Uh, first news story of the week, a reportage from Tom Warren at The Verge, where uh, it seems that PlayStation 5 Pro will indeed launch with a boost mode to enhance existing games. In actual fact, they're calling it a quote-unquote ultra-boost mode, uh, uh, which seems to go maybe one step beyond what we saw previously. Um, Alex, not sure. a huge amount of details there, but thoughts? Uh, not a huge amount of details, but I think this is just continuing the, the PlayStation 4 Pro tradition. Uh, we're there. There was an access to a certain amount of uh, the GPU and CPU resources. Never fully clarified exactly what it was on the GPU side, but uh, boosting up the CPU clocks there. Here, it'll be presumably more mild, given the power situation on the PlayStation 5 Pro? I, I don't know. Uh, like you said, scant details on the ground, but the whole idea is to just give backwards compatibility backwards compatibility titles from PS5 going up to PS5 Pro, those that do not receive direct patches to either unlock uh, great stuff like um, PSSR support or uh, bespoke modes specifically made for PS5 Pro that either enhance uh, resolution frame rate or graphical uh, options that these titles still regardless of that fact get some sort of boost i'm actually based upon uh what we're seeing though here i am very curious what it means on the gpu side of things and maybe oliver has something to say here but i but i think originally reporting around this the ps5 pro uh did point out to the fact that maybe the gpu clock per default of the ps5 pro was slightly lower than the original ps5 yeah. So, like, what does this mean exactly, this ultra boost mode? Well, do you have any insights, though, Oliver? I don't have any insights beyond the name, which ultra boost <laughs> mode, that certainly sounds a good deal better than just a boost mode, obviously. If you look back to the PS4 Pro, um, it was, from as far as we know, it was a pretty mild increase. So you got, uh, like, a 30% bump on uh, CPU clocks and a pretty mild bump from 800 megahertz, I think, to 911 megahertz in the GPU, which was not right. that big of an improvement. And in some titles like Battlefield 4, you did see a big improvement because that was the title that was primarily CPU limited. But in a lot of games, obviously, you're GPU limited. And in those instances, it didn't help you out very much. And we suspect that it was only using half of the butterfly GPU configuration. So 18 CUs instead of 36 CUs, which is obviously not giving you the full PS4 Pro power, obviously. Here, it could be, I think, one of two routes, right? Because, like Alex said, the PS5 Pro is rumored to use a lower GPU clock, I think around 2,100 megahertz or somewhere in that range, relative to PS4 or PS5. So one possibility would be bumping that clock rate in backwards compatible titles using a smaller GPU configuration. And the other possibility um, that is potentially more tantalizing is actually using the full 60 CU configuration on PS5 Pro and actually getting more out of that system by using the full GPU configuration, which is more similar to what Microsoft does on Xbox Series X, going from 40 CUs to 52 CUs. They use the whole GPU there. That's their backwards compatibility approach. And perhaps we're seeing something similar from Sony, or perhaps we're just seeing a GPU boost and it is more similar to that PS4 Pro situation. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, some thoughts on this. I mean, ultra boost mode obviously sounds better than boost mode, as you pointed out, <laughs> Oliver. And uh, you would just, you would expect that the full GPU is being used um, because if it is just a clock speed boost alone, it's not going to be that significant, similar to PS4 Pro. Uh, I guess what's missing from this discussion is whether there'll be any change to CPU clock speed, whether they'll they'll force on the enhanced uh, CPU mode for higher clocks i kind of hope they do but wouldn't be surprised if they don't for compatibility purposes um and yes i mean yeah the original ps4 pro you had that um ability to basically switch off half the gpu right um, there was an interesting change on xbox one x where you got the equivalent of three teraflops of of, of performance for um, existing games they kind mm -hmm. of split vertex and pixel shaders over one half of each, uh, or sorry, over half of each GP, uh, GPU. So, yeah. yeah, basically 20 CUs were for pixel shaders, 20 for vertex. Uh, maybe that's what boost mode was doing on PS4 Pro. We just never found out. The, the single clock speed boost just makes a bit more sense, I guess, for compatibility reasons. But the, the point is with this, it does look as though you're getting the full um, CPU power being diverted to older titles, which means, of course, um, anything that runs with dynamic resolution, you'd expect it to run at full resolution 
just full stop. Um, Hopefully. Yeah, so that would aid a great many titles because DRS has been so prevalent throughout the generation. Um, yeah, but beyond that, I'm not seeing um, too much potential for... Obviously, frame rates, if there are frame rate performance issues, they'll be uh, ironed out, you'd expect as well. And we've seen quite a few of that. But I guess in that respect, we'd also see games that are very definitely CPU limited, of which there are many. So, yeah, it's quite interesting to see how this one may pan out. But it's great to see that apparently it's going to be in there at launch if they're talking about it now. Um, They're briefing developers about it. And um, yes, I suspect developers are being asked to weigh up whether they want to do a full patch or whether they want to rely on ultra boost mode to uh, uh, to get the job done. Um, mm-hmm. We did previously disclose from the same materials that Tom Warren has got here that um, developers can actually go back to older games in their PlayStation libraries and um, uh, add in PSSR upscaling but it still requires some development effort this is like a fully hands-off thing where the developer will have zero input i guess and um, you should just be able to reap the benefit Um, oliver can you think of any particular games that would benefit tremendously from this i guess one that springs to mind would be um uh immortals of avian which was like oh my oh yeah limited on 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 resolution that's a good and then one. they increased the resolution and it, the performance decreased um so yeah that might be quite interesting and also how that would apply to um the fsr frame gen solution that's going to be added <laughs> yeah uh, any right. other spring to mind so i can think of a few uh there are kind of three tranches of games i think so there's games with dynamic res Games that are just GPU limited and maybe have not too much variance to dynamic res or no dynamic res, and then games with explicit VRR modes. So, like for right. games with dynamic res, you'd have titles like um, like Jedi Survivor, that'd be a good one, or Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. Those titles both use FSR2 and are pretty aggressive about it. So, hopefully, those titles do get proper PSSR enhanced patches, but if they don't, you know, Ultra Boost Mode could help. Also, some weird ones like Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, Final Fantasy XVI don't look too good. Again, that could be improved a lot. Um, and then games that are GP limited on PS5 with unstable performance. So you have like Elden Ring, uh, Ghostwire Tokyo, right. the aforementioned Mortals of Avium. Those titles all have, I think, fixed resolutions or you know close to fixed resolutions. Have yeah. some mm-hmm. performance and stability there. And then games with discrete VR modes, those are all the Sony ones, right? We know God of War, Ragnarok, Last of Us Part 1, Part 2, Remastered, basically all the Insomniac games. Um, Yeah, I think this could help a lot of catalog titles, a lot of older titles maybe, and a lot Mm -hmm. of titles that might not get a PSSR patch immediately, or PS5 Pro patch immediately, that still need some enhancement relative to their PS5 counterparts, which might not be in the best shape, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. I was thinking also Robocop, Rogue City. Robocop, seems yeah. to have issues in performance mode. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, interesting. Um, I guess it's going to be the proof of the pudding in the tasting, really. So um, not really too much more we can add to this, but I think it is great to see that it is actually going to be in there, presumably on day one. Uh, but, mm. you know, as Tom Warren points out in his uh, in his report, there will be games that just don't benefit at all. A game that already runs at its 30 FPS or 60 FPS cap won't gain anything in terms of performance. It's already where it is. And similarly, games with fixed rendering resolutions, they're not going to suddenly increase resolution without the developer going back in and actually producing a, uh, a PS5 Pro version of the game. So they're very definite limitations, but they're nothing that we haven't really seen before. And I am intrigued to see, you know, the extent to which um, the new level of GPU power is deployed because, you know, Sony are talking about a notional 45% increase in performance, which would basically be enough to potentially clear up all of those games that have got GPU limited scenarios in them right now. So I think, you know, this could be really, really good. It'd be great to go back and visit some of the more problematic titles, uh, particularly the ones that really do savagely use dynamic resolution scaling and there are quite a few at this point particularly in performance modes so yeah good stuff and we shall report more on that as more emerges but um something which we've got to quickly cover which is that the og uh leak video from moore's law is dead that basically was the first uh, outlet out there 
to um, to discuss the disclosures that Sony made to developers. That has been now subject to a copyright strike. Uh, this supporter question, Darja Ko, another thing happened this week. Sony took down the uh, Moore's Law is Dead PS5 Pro Specs Leak video from YouTube in a quote unquote copyright strike. Surely Sony knows that the takedown itself will simply get more coverage of the specs while legitimizing their accuracy. Is this simply an act of pre-release marketing? What else would they stand to gain from taking an individual video down rather than uh-huh. going after the source of the leak? Um, as far as I can tell, that video contained actual screenshots of actual Sony documentation, uh, which does mean that it is... Um, subject to copyright and you know maybe even potentially proof of handling stolen goods so it you know i think certainly would have had grounds to take it down but you're right it does kind of legitimize the the leak but then again everybody has legitimized the leak with their own (laughs) um, reporting at this point so I i think it's basically sony sending out a statement from their legal teams i don't know if you've got anything to add to that oliver uh yeah i mean i'd add it to a gigantic pile of evidence that the ps5 pro leak is genuine but again we've seen that from every outlet under the sun every credentialed reporter every experienced leaker uh us obviously um (laughs) but i think there is some sense in not showing these documents but i also think that uh perhaps um in this individual case it helped establish the credibility of his reporting and maybe if we're talking about a a bigger or more established outlet, maybe that wouldn't have been as uh, as important. But I think in this case, that really did catch the eye that those documents were being shown um, as to whether it was correct or wise or not. I'm not too sure. But obviously, in this case, uh, that really did catch the eye immediately as soon as I, I saw that information. So, yeah, I mean, it's kind mm-hmm. of a rock in a hard place, but but um, I understand why it was taken down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, what do you think, Alex? Yeah, I almost feel like it's, uh, how do you say it, like punishment? (laughs) I mean, legal team just saying like, okay, everyone talked about it after the fact. That was the first place where it was discussed. Um, But uh, I don't think they would, I mean, I don't think we would show direct documentation of something like that. Um, But I I think they, they, them punishing like a smaller outlet uh, is just kind of like, a very corporate thing to do. I don't necessarily agree with it, <laughs> um, but yeah. Yeah, I Sucks. mean, ultimately, I don't know whether there's monetization implications for that. You know, maybe they lose their I advertising revenue or whatnot. But even so, I mean, you know, it does kind of legitimize the leak, but we kind of knew it was real anyway. Uh, in terms of actually showing documents, I kind of see what you mean there, Oliver. But at the same time, you know, how do you know they're authentic? I guess there was the visualization of the PSSR uh, comparisons, which I believe were in that uh, disclosure. Yes, indeed they were. Yeah, but even so, um, you know, there's just so so much fakery uh, going around at the moment. It's, you know, it's really difficult to say what is a fake document and and what isn't. And it's down to the (laughs) reputation of the outlet, basically, at the end of the day. 